Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Does Average Simulation of Boost Converters Show the Right Half Plane Zero? There are some references here that I'm showing. One is a video, Average Modeling and Simulation of PWM Converters. Here is the link. And there is also a paper published some years ago. And here is the link. I'm going to put these two links at the page of the YouTube video that you are now watching. There is an urban legend that average models cannot show right half plane zero of PWM converters. This presentation shows that when properly built, average model will display the right half plane. So what is a right half plane zero? Here I'm showing a small signal transfer function, say of a, some PWM converter, and here at the numerator we see a zero, but unlike a regular or left side plane zero, we have here a right half plane zero because we have here a minus. This minus implies that the location of the zero is on the right side of the complex plane, as opposed to the regular zero, which is B on the left side. So in this case, the behavior is a bit different and it will exhibit itself in the time and frequency domain. In the time domain, in a system that will have such a zero, right half plane zero, you may see this phenomena. When you subject the system to a step, a positive step, rather than going up to the new level, it will go first down and then to the level. On the other hand, on the frequency domain, we're going to see the regular behavior as far as the gain is concerned because the absolute value which is one square plus this term square square root of the whole thing is still going up with frequency when i'm changing s to j omega it's still going up beyond the breakpoint but due to the minus sign the phase is lagging rather than leading as in the regular zero. So in this case we have an extra leg here which is making life complicated as far as the compensator design goes and the feedback of the system. But I'm not going into this issue in this presentation. Now such a zero is found in a boost converter, flyback, and also in a buck boost converter. Here I'm showing a boost converter. This is a the parasitic resistance of the inductor, diode, switcher, and then we have the output section. I'm showing here the ESR of the capacitor and here the load. And we are interested here in the small signal between the modulation here of the duty cycle. Okay, this will be sort of modulated here. This is small d and the small changes at the output, the AC component at the output. So this is what we are interested in. This information is extremely important and it is the basic information that you need when designing the compensator or the feedback loop of the system. So here is a formal expression of the small signal V out to D for a boost converter. This is well known, I've taken it from this website. And what we see here that we have two zeros, one on the left side, one on the right side, and then we have a denominator, which is the second order due to the L and C that we have in the system. Now the regular zero left side is located, the omega one over the resistance and C, this is the ESR here and the capacitance, while the right half plane zero is located here, this is one minus D on, this is D of square times the load divided by the inductor. So th this is very well known. And I'm going now to do simulation of this system using average model. And in particular, I'm going to use the switched inductor model that I have developed some years ago. And this can be used for average behavioral simulation of PWM converters. There is a reference in the page of this uh, video. Now the very basic idea without going into details of this method is the following. 
We are starting with generating an average voltage that is imposed on the inductor. Okay, so we are imposing the inductor to the average voltage on it. And this will be a function of V in, V out, the operating point duty cycle and the perturbation. So this is the average voltage on the inductor. Here we have now a current source, which is the average current that is going to the load. This is the load, the capacitor and the resistance. And this is a function of the average current inductor. This is this current which is generated by this average voltage, duty cycle and small perturbation. Now, the duty cycle is coded into voltage, so the steady state or DC component or the operating point is emulated by a DC voltage source, while the perturbation is an AC voltage source. And this model can be made CCM and DCM compatible, and it has automatic transition from one to the other. And furthermore, it is a large and small signal model that is, it can, it can be used for simulation on DC simulation, AC, and transient analysis. And here is the model for the boost converter. We have here the source, the input voltage, and this is the average voltage that is seen on this right side of the inductor. This is the inductor and the parasitic resistance. Now the average voltage we see here is equal to the D, D off times output voltage. This is the voltage that the average voltage the inductor sees and the average current that is passing actually through the diode going to the output is the, the current that will be generated here times again uh, D off, that is the off time of the duty cycle. And here we see that the duty cycle is emulated by this DC source, so this is an operating point duty cycle of 0.5, and for AC analysis, I'm putting here an AC source. This is a CCM model for large and small signal, and it is DC, AC, and transient analysis compatible. As I have said, there, with some addition, we can make it to be compatible with both CCM and DCM. Look up the reference on the first page. And just to show the performance of uh, this model in say DC analysis, I've put here a DC source here which is changing from 0 to 0.9 and I'm looking at the DC at the output. We know that the output is 1 over D off and this is the curve here for again the duty cycle is coded into voltage so 500 millivolt is 0.5 and since the input is 12 volt with the duty cycle of 0.5, the off is 0.5, we get 24 volts. So everything is fine. So now I'm going to do some small signal AC simulation. And for that I need some actual parameters for all these uh, components. So I'm setting up the steady state duty cycle, the operating point duty cycle 0.5, the inductor is 1 millihenry, and in order not to have extra terms here, I'm putting the resistance here actually to zero of the inductor, capacitor is 300 microfarad with zero ESR, and we have an R load of 10 ohm. The reason for putting here now zero ESR at this point is to make the left side zero, the normal zero, at high frequency so we won't see it. So we're going to see only the second order and the right half plane zero. And the location of the right half plane zero is, this is the equation and it is calculated to be around 700 hertz. And here it is. We see here the gain, this is the gain, this is V out over D small d and this is the typical second order behavior. We have a peaking here due to the certain Q of the system. And then we see the phase starting with zero and then it goes down. We are expecting here a minus 180 degree due to the 
second order system as a denominator. And then we have this extra phase shift lagging due to the right of plane zero, which is located here at 700 Hertz. And we see that it is still then lagging, going to a level of minus 270, that is the 180 plus the 90 of, of the right of plane zero. So everything looks okay. And now I'm going to add the left side zero. And this is done by adding a ESR of 100 million. In this case, the right of plane zero, of course, stays at the same place, while the frequency of the left side zero is five kilohertz calculated from here. So what we're going to see here now is second order effect. And then we're going to see a lagging due to the right of plane zero and leading due to the left side zero. Okay, and here it is. We see the minus 180 degree due to the second order. We see the farther leg due to the right of plane zero at 700 hertz. And then we see the leading, the lead due to the left side zero, five kilohertz. And we get here to approximately back to minus 180 because these two actually cancel out in terms of the uh, phase shift here. So we see that, we see the right of plane zero, we see of course the left side plane zero, and, not, and of course the shift due to the second order system in the denominator. So the conclusion is that the switch inductor model, this is how we call this model, definitely shows the right of plane zero. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you will find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.